Hi everyone, it's Paula. Welcome back to Trapani's Tech Tips for Teachers, where my goal is to help make teachers' lives a little easier. Hi again. So in my last getting started with Google Classroom video, I showed how to sign in and, you know, just kind of take a peek around if you're a first time user. Now that you're in, this time I'd like to show you a little more about how to navigate the, the actual site. Um, so back to my view as a student. Uh, remember I'm signed in as a, a fake student and I'm looking at all the classrooms uh, that I'm a part of. I have signed into Google Classroom. Uh, remember that you have to sign in uh, with your school Gmail account. And if the device that you're working on is currently signed into an email, um, you know, maybe your personal Gmail or someone else's email, if it's a shared device, you have to sign out of that because otherwise you will not be able to access Google Classroom and you certainly won't be able to see all of your classes. Um, Classroom is only um, available to people in a school network like ours. So we have that at student.uniondaleschools.org email address. That's why we can access this. So now that we're in, we have we see all the classes that we're members of. I'm going to go back to that practice class. I have a few things to show you in there. So once you click on any given class, this is what you're looking at. And what you'll notice is, I think I mentioned last time, you know, the header, right? So teachers will usually have their name and the name of their course available up here. I've also put a little reminder to remind you that this right here, classwork, is the tab that makes the most sense. So now that we're looking, um, when you click any given class, you have the default view is the stream. And if you notice across the top here, there are three tabs. So there are three sections of this class that you can deal with. Um, when you're logged in on a regular computer, a laptop or a Chromebook, this is where those three tabs appear across the top. If you're on a mobile device, those three tabs are more down here on the bottom. Okay, so please get in the habit of, you know, looking for them in the appropriate place. Again, the, the default is the stream and the stream looks very similar to, um, you know, any social media site like Facebook or even a blog. It's the place where teachers can type, um, you know, an announcement for the class. Students can reply to that comment if they've enabled, you know, commenting, you know, being allowed for students. And it's basically just a message board. The announcements are posted in uh, reverse chronological order. So the newest announcement is going to be at the top. This is the one I posted most recently. And then the oldest one would be last. Okay. Um, don't get in the habit of looking for your assignments here. Sometimes the assi assignments do show up here, but it's a mix. It could be a regular announcement. It could be an assignment that you have to complete. It could be to prepare for a test. It could be a million things. Just take a look at the first few things, see if there's some new announcement, but really the classwork tab is going to be where you spend most of your time. Before we click on that one, though, let's just look quickly at people. There's not a whole lot of information there for you. It will name who the teacher or teachers are for that class. In some cases, there are a couple, you know, um, co-teachers are allowed and we have agreed to help each other. So you might see my name show up as a co-teacher of another class, even though it's not the library class, you know, it's not my content area. Um, and then you'll see a list of the classmates who have already joined that class. Okay. You won't see your own name. You'll see other kids' names who are in your class. But really, the most important tab to remember and look at all the time is classwork. So when you click that, what you see is, um, again, in reverse chronological order, the most recent assignment will be po uh, first, and then the older ones will be lower on the list. Now, not every teacher is going to have their assignments divided with these larger headings. Uh, Google Classroom calls them topics. And some teachers have decided to um, group things according to topics or subheadings or categories. Not everybody has. So it's very possible that you'll just have a long list of assignments. And then you can look to the right of the assignment to see the due date. Okay. For me, I, I have very few items in this uh, practice classroom. But what I have is one category called tech tips and another category that I've called assignments. So I've made it very easy for the students in this class to know exactly where they have to look. Right. Um, 
one thing you should get in the habit of, you know, sort of checking is the icon next to the assignment. If it's an assignment and you have to do something, it looks like this. That's the one that I think I had mentioned in the previous video. It looks like a clipboard. Okay. That will indicate to you that there is something for you to do there, usually for a grade. Okay. The ones that look different than that are there just for your information. It could be a reference sheet. It could be, um, you know, a reminder of some kind, you know, some sort of um, resource, right? Uh, Google Classroom allows us teachers to add something that they call materials. I would call them resources, right? So for me, I made a resource called Troubleshooting iPad Glitches. It's very simply a Google Doc. If you click where it says View Material, you'll see what it is. You can open it up. It's a Google Doc. And there's nothing for you to do. It's just information, okay? Uh, so here comes my Google Doc very slowly. There it is. So just reminding you what to do. So a teacher could post, you know, something that makes sense for their content area, you know, a list of formulas, a list of valuable websites, the link to your online textbook, you know, things like that, right? So there might be a material and you might look at it and go, what do I do? Nothing. It's a material. It's a resource. There's nothing for you to do there. Okay. And we know that because the icon says material. Assignment is something different. So I have three assignments listed here and they all have very similar titles, but I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you three different kinds of assignments that may show up for you. And they're all similar, but they have slight differences when it comes to submitting work. And that has been the biggest complaint that teachers have given is that kids told me they submitted, but I have a blank assignment, you know, things like that. So I wanted to kind of demonstrate why that could be the case for you uh, when you're, you know, submitting assignments to your teachers. So let's go from the bottom. This is the oldest one that I posted. It's called Feeling Stress. They're all called Feeling Stress. This one only has two question marks though. So you click the assignment once, and then you scroll down just a little bit to the bottom where it says view assignment. That will give you um, a more complete view of the of the thing. So we'll see right away a due date at the top. This was due on May 1st. It has a title. And here's a little bit of a description. And you'll see if your teacher added a link, you'll see it below. Now, in this case, I um, created this assignment that said, hey, I found a video on YouTube. It's only five minutes long. Watch it. And then if you read through this whole thing, please get in the habit of reading everything because the last sentence right here tells me, um, you know, what they want. Oh, I'm sorry. The second sentence tells me what the teacher wants you to do. And that is share five sentences about your experience. So what happens is Sometimes the teacher will post something very similar, maybe a YouTube video, maybe a brain pop video, and they want you to watch it and they want you to share something about it, but they haven't given you a Google Doc over here. Right now I have one because I did it for, um, you know, when I practiced before, um, but initially it just showed Mark as done. There was no document. What existed up here before I did the assignment was a thing a link that said add or create and that um is where i'm sort of expected to click on and when i did that it generated a document for me called ronald weasley feeling stressed it gave it a title because it's connected to this class and i was able to type on it you know i watched this video here are five things about my experience um so i had to click where it said add or create and once I was all done, I had the option to submit that link. If I just clicked mark as done, nothing got submitted to my teacher. And then the teachers then, you know, will email me or somebody else and say, or, or you and say, where's the work? I have no work here. And you say, well, I watched the video. Well, they wanted you to do something. So if they're asking you to write or explain, but they don't give you a Google Doc to do it, it's up to you to click add or create. Um, so that's one kind of assignment. Another kind was the second one on my list, which was a basically the same assignment, but I changed it up a little to make it more clear. So when I click view assignment there, you'll see uh, in this case, 
the description is much shorter, right? I didn't have to write all of the questions I wanted my students to answer because I actually created a Google Doc for them that they could click on and it was very obviously right here. So same video, I want them to watch the video, but then it says when you finished watching, open the Google Doc attached and answer the questions. The doc was already there. So then it's obvious and the kids don't usually get confused because they see a doc with their name on it where they can answer the questions. And if we open this doc, you'll see all the questions that were on that previous assignment, um, you know, just to give you some guidelines of what you wanted to answer. So you see, I started typing some nonsense, you know, you click next to it and type. And then um, when you're all finished, you'd go back to, uh, you know, be able to hit submit at the top. Right now it says unsubmit for me because I've already handed it in. So um, the third kind of assignment is, whoops, involves a Google form. Again, same assignment, feeling stressed. We'll click on view assignment. And this time we'll see two attachments. One of them is the YouTube video, again, for the third time, right? Quick little description of what the student is expected to do. Watch the video. And when you finished, open the Google form and answer the, the questions in the form. A lot of teachers are now getting used to using Google Forms. Much easier for them, it gets submitted right to them. So when you click this Google form, it's telling you what to do. You have to remember to do it, right? But if you look over here, here's that add or create button. You don't have to this time. You have a Google form. It's all ready for you. And we have a, a button that says Mark is done. I haven't done it yet because I didn't fill in the form. Once I click on it, you'll see uh, if you haven't seen a Google form yet, it's like a survey and it can have a variety of questions. Um, this time there was a question that was a yes or no. So you might have to choose, you know, click on the appropriate answer. And then this one is uh, a pull down, right? So it says rate your, you know, how difficult was this for you, right? So if we click on the arrow, this is a different kind of question, right? So there were five options. You choose the appropriate one. Again, a yes or no. Sometimes your teacher will ask you on a Google form to type something, right? So this is a short answer um, question. So here was a you know simple question and you're expected to type your answer. And then this one was another short answer. I said, hey, you know, if you really liked it, go find another video and copy and paste the link. So you put www dot, whatever the thing is, right? Uh, you can choose, sometimes if your teacher sets it up, if you wanna see your answers, you can slide this over here and say, all right, send me a copy, I'd like to see what I did. Either way, you hit submit. When I finish this form, I'm gonna hit submit. Let's hit that right now. Oops, I'm sorry, I forgot to respond to one of my questions. I'm gonna hit submit. Now I have done the work on Google Forms. This form is now being sent off to my teacher to be graded, okay? My response was recorded and now I can go back to the assignment and the last step that you can't forget to do is to mark it as complete, right? So we've done, we watched the video, we filled in the form, now I can click mark as done. I did something. I didn't have to add or create a doc here because my teacher was kind enough to attach something for me. And in this case, it's a Google form where the answers were already submitted to them separately. I don't have to add a new thing here. So I can hit mark as done. I didn't attach work and you could say, yep, that's fine because I sent my Google form and we're gonna mark it as done. So now my view is turned in, no work attached, but that's kind of a lie because we do have a Google form here. I just didn't attach something as a document here, okay? So this would be um, not only Google forms, it could be an Edpuzzle, it could be brain pop video, uh, it could be quizzes, Something where you go to a separate link and fill in the answers and submit them in that link and your teacher gets them, right? If you do an Edpuzzle or if you do a Brain Pop video, your teacher has access to see your answers if you're signed in to that website. In this case, you're signed in to see your Google form. So the teacher is gonna get the answers. You don't have to worry about where they are. The teacher has to know where the answers are, right? So they've gotten your answers. You just have to mark it off here. Yes, I did this separate thing, okay? So those were the three styles of assignments. Whoops. Uh, one was where we, whoops, over here. The first one 
If you remember, we had to create a Google Doc ourselves, so we had some place to type. The second one, the teacher created a Google Doc for us, and it was obvious what to click on and submit. And the third one was not a Google Doc, it was a form, but it could have easily been some other um, type of document or assignment or website. And we submit the answers right there on that Google form and then go back to the project, to the classwork tab uh, and the assignment and click mark as done. So hopefully that made it clear about how these things might look. Thanks so much for watching. If you found today's tip useful, like, comment, or share. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing. If you have any questions, comments, or requests, you know where to find me.